Hi everyone, today I want to share with you how I am setting up my BJU Press Distance Learning Parent Guides or Facilitator Guides or Teacher's Guides, whatever you want to call them, but basically they are what come in this purple package right here. And I have set them up in two binders. Now this year I have a first grader, a third grader, a fifth grader, and a seventh grader doing BJU Press distance learning. So I have a lot of guides to actually get into binders and organize. Now I've actually set them up in three different ways. My fifth grader and my seventh grader, their binders, their teacher binders are set up the same way and so I will show that to you in just a minute. My third grader and my first grader, their binders are set up differently and there's a couple reasons that I set up those binders differently. The first reason is that um, the fifth grade and seventh grade materials, the tests and quizzes came inside the teacher's guide and so that just lended itself to setting it up differently than first and third grade where the tests and quizzes came separate from the teacher's guide. The other reason that I set up the binders differently is that my first grader and my third grader need a little bit more assistance in getting their schoolwork out and ready for the day. My fifth and seventh grader can work pretty much independently, find what they need, the materials they need on their own. So a lot of this stuff I have just given to them. It's not in the teacher binder. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you how I've set up my first grade third grade and fifth and seventh grade binders for BJU Press distance learning parent guides. Let's go ahead and get started with my teacher's folder for my first grader. She is doing BJU Press distance learning heritage studies and science. So I was able to fit all of her stuff into one binder. So let's go ahead and take a peek inside and I will show you what that looks like and how I've set it all up. My first grader is doing Heritage Studies and Science from BJU Press, and the first semester is Science. What I have done is I have divided um, the binder into some larger sections like Parent Guide, Handouts, um, Activity Manual, and then I've divided each of those sections up a little bit more. So let me go through each one. The first section here is the Science Parent Guide, and so what I have done is I have put little tabs on things that I need to access quickly, such as the materials list. That is something that I wanna be able to get to really quickly so that I can see what week we're on and what materials are needed. The other thing that I wanna access real quickly is the lesson guide. So I have a tab for that. And what I have done is I put a paper clip on the sheet that we are on and I will just move that as we go through the lesson guide. Makes it a little bit easier for me to find the sheet that we're on. I also have a tab for resources and what resources is is really just the answer key that goes along with um, the science curriculum. The next larger tab is handouts and these are all the handouts for uh, first grade science that go along with the video programs. And I just pull out what she needs for one week's worth of school and put that in her binder. And then I leave the rest in here so she doesn't have to try to find those handouts. I um, pull those out for her each week. I also have her science activity manual. Now my older kids have their activity manuals in their binder or on their shelf. But for my first grader, I just felt like it was easier for me to pull out a week's worth of handouts for her, put them in her binder, and then she just didn't have to worry about trying to find her activity manual and you know figure out what pages she needed. So I'm just doing that for her. The next tab is for um, science for the tests and quizzes. Actually, it's just tests and the answer key, I'm sorry. And so I have two tabs, one is for tests, and so those are actually the tests that she will be taking, and then the key or the answer key so that I can grade those tests. Now the next tab is Heritage Studies, and I've set that up the exact same way. I have a large tab for the parent guides, and then I've got it further divided into material list, lesson guide, and resources. I also have a tab for the handouts, and the activity manual that goes along with Heritage Studies, and then one for the tests and the keys, and you can see I've got those tabs further divided there. I also have one other one, which is handwriting. This actually isn't um, a BJU handwriting 
program, but I just wanted to keep that in this binder so it was all together. So I have all my daughter's handwriting worksheets are behind that tab. So that's how I set up the first grade teachers folder and we will now move on to third grade. Next, let's take a look at what my teacher folders look like for my third grader. Now, he is using several different subjects with BJU Press Distance Learning. So each subject is in its own folder, but they are all set up exactly the same. So I'm gonna use science as an example. I'll turn the camera around and show you what it looks like inside, how I've organized everything. Here are the teacher's folders for third grade. And like I said, they're all set up the exact same way. So I'm gonna use science as an example. And you guys, this is so simple. All I did was take the teacher guides um, right here in this little purple stack of paper and I popped them into a three ring binder and I just put tabs on the sections that I wanted to be able to access really, really easily. So I've got one for material lists because I want to be able to easily know what materials are needed for the week that we're on. I have one for the lesson guide as well. And again, I have a paper clip right up there on the week that we are on. I also have a tab for the resources, which includes, as you can see, answer keys and rubrics. So I've got a tab for that. Also have one for the test that he will be taking as well as the answer key. So really easy setup for my third grader for um, BJU Press Distance Learning. The last teacher guide that I'm going to show you is an example of how I'm setting up my fifth and seventh graders teachers folders. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around and I will show you what it looks like inside. Like I said earlier, uh, fifth grade and seventh grade, the teacher's guides um, were a little bit different than how they came for my first and third grader. So the fifth and seventh graders, it was this big stack of paper that included the answers to the work text pages. It included the tests and quizzes that my fifth and seventh grader are gonna be taking for each subject, along with the um, answer keys for the tests and the quizzes, and it's all mixed in here. It's not separated out. So what I decided to do was put a couple tabs for things that I needed to find easily. For example, where I'm gonna record grades, material lists, as well as the lesson guides here. And so I will do the same thing that I did with the other grades. I'll put a paper clip up there so that I can find, um, you know, which sheet I need to be on for whatever day and week we are on in the lesson guides. And then what I did here was I just numbered a whole bunch of tabs. There is, you know, this number one is for chapter one or, um, you know, for literature seventh grade, it's broken up into units, but this is the English binder and it's done in um, chapters. So this is chapter one and it goes all the way, I think, to chapter 16. Yep, there's chapter 16. This just makes it a lot easier for me. So let's say my daughter says, hey mom, I need something graded from chapter two. Um, it's just really easy for me to find what I need. I only have to look through just a handful of pages to find what she needs versus, you know, having to flip through all of this. And so she says she needs, um, you know, a chapter two quiz then that's right there. And then I know that the answer is going to be next, the answer key. So it just makes it a lot easier if she's on chapter seven and she has something that I need to grade in chapter seven. I just have to flip through a couple pages to find what I'm looking for instead of flipping through everything. So it's really been helpful to have those little tabs for the different chapters or units, depending on um, if the subject has uh, chapters or units. So anyways, that is how I have set up the teacher's folders for fifth and seventh grade using English fifth grade as an example. Well, that is how I'm organizing my teacher guides for BJU Press Distance Learning. I hope this video was helpful for you. Now, there is something that I want to clarify. For some of you who have been following me here on YouTube or on my blog, you might be a little confused because you would know that for my third grader, fifth grader, and seventh grader, I am doing BJU Press distance learning online with them. Only my first grader is using DVDs. And so let me just explain something to you. When you do the DVD program, you get um, a teacher guide 
like the one that I just showed you, how I set all of those up. In this teacher guide is also a video lesson guide for you, as you saw in the videos. Now, however, when you are doing BJU Press distance learning online, all you get is a video lesson guide that looks like this. And all of the parent guide resources that are normally in this purple package are actually going to be online for you. So you don't even have to bother with binders like I did. You can just put all of these lesson guides into one binder and then you go online for all the other materials that you need for implementing BJU Press Distance Learning online. So you might be wondering, why do I have these then if I'm using online for three of the grade levels? Well, here's why. I originally wanted to use BJU Press Distance Learning DVDs for all of my kids, but guess what? I realized I don't have four DVD players or even four TVs. So that meant that three of my kids had to do the online program. Now, all I really wanted was them to do online to watch the videos, but I still wanted them to do their tests and their quizzes um, on paper. And so I contacted BJU Press, I told them the situation, and they were more than happy to send me these teacher guides for free, even though I was doing it online. But now that I have access to BJU Press online, I am finding there are a lot of great features on there that um, make me think that maybe in years to come, we will just move completely to BJU Press online. So I have all of these teachers guides, I have the test and the quizzes um, in paper form. I will be using those for myself and I'll be using the paper form of the tests and quizzes with my children. But with my older ones, I might slowly transition them to using BJU Press online and just going online to take those tests, to take those quizzes. And I'm going to give it a try and see what I like better using my handy dandy binders that I just created with these um, teacher guides in them or using the teacher guides online. And so at the end of the year, hopefully I'll be able to do another video for you, just sharing with you the difference between using the DVD program and using the online program, and maybe which one I liked better, what the pros and cons of each one are. All right, you guys, again, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe so you'll be notified of new videos in the future.